There it is. Bear with us just a moment here. So for those of you that have been following along here, what we're going to do today, so the last two episodes, we've been talking about how to make the most out of this quarantine situation that we find ourselves in. There we go. So two episodes ago, we talked with Kaylin on how we're going to basically get started with meal prepping, how we're going to get started building new habits, building better habits. Last week, we talked about basically what I do every single week, how we meal prep. I gave you a grocery list. I gave you the step-by-step -step exercises on how to make the thing work. So we set up things for us to plan to do. Go. Sorry, well, that's still working on the sharing thing here. We set up plan, we set up uh, the building blocks to make a plan. So now what are we going to do? We're going to decide how we're going to make that plan work. So personally for myself, I've been in situations where I set up a plan and it goes to fruition uh, like it was meant to be. There's been other times where I've stumbled coming out of the gates and then fallen flat on my face. So what we have today is we've got a guest, uh, Tamika Taylor, my wife. She is an entrepreneurial coach. She is an expert in personalities and how to basically get the most out of what's going on up here because everybody's different. So, without further ado, Miss, whoop, there it is, Mrs. Samika Taylor. Um, what I'd like you to just give everyone an overview of kind of what you do, how you do it, and how you can best help to help people in the current situation they're in. So, we can come out of this, uh, this little quarantine here and not be the same person we were when we went in. Okay, perfect. So I am, uh, like Dr. Taylor said, I'm an entrepreneur lifestyle coach. What I do is I work with small business owners on their mindset. So a lot of different coaches, like Dr. Taylor has talked about before, that he um, has a coach. They work specifically on their business. Well, I work specifically with people's minds and their mindset and how um, they are stopping themselves from moving forward. So I uh, have a master's degree in working with people and I focus on personality development and personality assessments. And so I work with my clients on the different personality assessments that there are out there, give them more insight to how their brain works and how it is different from everybody else that they work with. So you, talk about, you work with the different types of personality assessments. Now, Obviously, we're married. I know more about what you do than the average person does. Right. Um, but I know that you use you use four big ones. Um, could you just favorite just kind of go over the four big ones that you use and how they differentiate from one another? Okay, perfect. So I use a couple different ones, like you said. So I study the first one is love languages and so the reason why i do that is because a lot of the reasons why people react to certain things in certain situations in their life is because they feel that they're unloved um so it works not only in your home but also works in business and uh your career as well so we focus on that so love languages looks at um how you prefer to be loved and also, when you're studying it, you can kind of figure out how you give away love. Love is such a strong emotion, and we do a lot of things based off of it. So that is a huge one that we study. Um, uh, study Strengths Finders. So uh, if you've never taken the Strengths Finders assessment before, it's by Gallup. It is instrumental in in facilitating how people view themselves and and the work that they do. So I, I saw someone speak once and she said, anyone who tells you to work on your weaknesses is only trying to keep you mediocre. I remember that. I remember that the time you told me that. I thought that was freaking genius. Yeah. It I'm is sorry, profound. Sorry, no, it's okay. It's profound. It is. It's genius because we all have different strengths. We all function out of those different strengths. And if you don't know what your strengths are, you could be chasing careers, you could be chasing jobs, you could be chasing projects that don't 
benefit those strengths and then wonder why you're completely miserable job after job after job after job. And so it's a really profound, I recommend everybody, whether you are working or not to take that assessment, because it will change how you view working. Um, and, and what are the other ones? Yep. So Love Language Strengths Finders Enneagram is a big one, and I'm going to be covering that one here in a second, um, but more in depth. Enneagram is the study of your emotional intelligence and how you emotionally view the world. And it is based off of a common fear that you have, and that's the reason why you react and you ha exude emotions the way that you do based off of that common fear. And then um, the last one that I study is Myers-Briggs. And that, um, I feel like everyone has taken the Myers-Briggs exam at some point. It's the one that we took in high school and then they gave us a list of different professions we'd be really good at. And I remember when I took that test, I cursed out my guidance counselor because I was like, how dare you say that I'm going to be any of those things. I'm going to be way better than any of those things, um, which says that's a lot about my personality, but Myers-Briggs breaks down. Like, are you an introvert, extrovert? Are you judging, sensing? Um, do you think about things or do you feel things? That's what that one does. So all of them work together and kind of give you, um, this just, it's, I call it your personality recipe. When I give my clients the full gamut, it's your personality recipe. It's how you view the world. It's how you function. It's how you fight. It's how you love. It's how you work. It's how you play. Okay. So what we're talking about here, we're talking about planning. So, I mean, if this is about personalities, there's obviously, you know, certain types of people like to plan certain types of ways. Um, makes perfect sense, right? So one of the things that kind of interests me, and I don't know, I'm, I don't want to speak for everybody that's watching us, um, but I had never heard of the Enneagram till you told me about it. Uh, I've heard of Myers-Briggs. Like you said, we, we took it. If you took a psychology class ever, you took the Myers-Briggs. Um, love languages. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's an old mild personality. It's a neat test. Yeah, it doesn't really interest me that much. But like strength finders and Enneagram, I don't know if it's just because of the different categorizations, really, but those are the two that really kind of interest me, per se, and specifically the Enneagram, because I hadn't heard of it until about three months ago. It just, it's just, it's something new, and it's, it's a way for me to kind of, for lack of a better word, maybe compartmentalize myself, like I fit in this box, or this box, or this box, or this box isn't me, so I don't have to worry about that. Now, if we take this whole thing into, like I said, the, the planning aspect of it, um, one of the neat things I feel about Enneagram is, what is it? Is it your number one through eight? One through ten? It's one through nine. Close. <laughs> yeah. You're close. Uh, it's one through nine, and I really like the Enneagram assessment, too. I think part of the reason why you don't like Myers-Briggs or Love Languages is because it's too broad of a category it's putting you in um which because i know your personality and i know how your brain works i know that's why you don't like it um but so enneagram and strengths they're they they are broader so strengths finders there's 34 different strengths and you can get what's called a strengths dna and it's going to tell you all of your strengths your top strengths and your your weaknesses which is really profound when you get your entire dna strand and then the enneagram is not nine different types. The reason why I love this assessment so much, one is because it deals with emotions and a lot of people don't like to talk about emotions and honestly emotion, <laughs> I know, right? Imagine that. And emotion can drastically change whether you're going to start today or tomorrow. And I really like this assessment too, because it looks at the way that you react to the world based on whether you are average like just kind of neutral. If you are just steady going along the pace, but it also looks at when you're extremely stressed, when you're extremely sad, when you're in love, when you're not, I mean, it, it breaks down all the different things and, and, and realizes the fact that you're emotional. You can be one number now. And when you're stressed, you'll be a completely different number. And that's why it's kind of like that Jekyll and Hyde thing. If anyone's ever told you like, you weren't like that yesterday. What happened to you? 
It's because something in your environment changed you and your, your number and your reactions changed. Okay, cool. So uh, co one thing that you said, you know, how you react to the world or how you just finished it, how your environment and how your reaction changes. Um, mm -hmm. Again, so we're setting plans. You know what they say, even the best laid plans can go awry. Um, mm -hmm. so that would be kind of you know, setting yourself up for success or setting yourself up for failure in a sense. So if we are if we just stick to, let's say, the Enneagram, uh, we got the numbers one through nine. What is the best way? I guess, I guess if it's possible, can you give almost like a one-word description of numbers one through nine and then how they might best lay out a plan? And then the follow-up is how would they best overcome a roadblock that they would hit? Because I, I feel like it'd be safe to assume each number, one through nine, would react differently to this plan not going to plan. Right. Well, yeah, one through nine, and obviously each type is going to, is reacting to the environment that we're in right now differently. And so some of them aren't physically capable of creating a plan right now. Like they're, like what's happening right now is too much where they are just living in this moment. And once this is all over, then they can get back to their plans. But right now, the best way that they can take care of themselves is being here. So I can go through um, the easiest way, the shortest way to go through all of them is to lay out their basic fear, because that's what it all revolves around. Enneagram is you trying to protect yourself from your big, biggest emotional fear. And basic fear. So, I, I imagine there's a lot of people that are living in a state of fear right now. Yes. For better or worse. Yes. Um, and so, okay, so Enneagram type one, their basic fear is not being seen as good, not being seen as proper. They are our perfectionist type. When I, um, I like to say Monica from Friends is an Enneagram one. <laughs> and so, um, they're, Right now, the Enneagram one type is the type that might be stuck right now in just focusing on what's happening right now. Um, they're the type when their family had to come home, they made all of the boards and the schedules and and posted on on Instagram and say, this is what we're doing today. Because like, and then people are like, okay, great, good job. And they're like, yes, okay, I am doing a good job. Ones can really only focus on right now. Okay. And then when this is over, they'll move on. Twos, number one fear is being unwanted and um, or unworthy of love. That's their basic fear. And so going forward, that's their plan is around people and around their people and their family and their friends and their careers. Yes. Hang on just one second. Um, and so, sorry, Frankie's here. Frankie wants to say hi, everybody. You say hi. Say hi. Oh, she looks a hot mess, but that's okay. Um, <clears throat> so twos creating a plan is around their people. And so twos, if you are in a spot where you, well, twos and everybody. Right now, everyone's calling what, what's happening to us right now the new normal. And that is al almost detrimental to them, to everyone. This is a temporary circumstance which is going to lead us to a new normal. Well, there's a lot of people saying this is a new normal and then they're panicking and freaking out because it's like, oh, I'm gonna be stuck in my house for forever. That's, that's not what the case is. And so twos, really, if you're working on your plan, the best thing that you can do is everything that gets you, <laughs> that gets you out of the house, <laughs> that gets you out of the house and starting your career again. Threes, basic fear is being seen as worthless. So threes are the ones who have started a successful business in the last couple of weeks, are plowing through whatever they can do, finding resources for medical staff that they can find and creating a business out of it to get supplies or maybe, or um, help whoever that they can. And so threes already have a plan. They already have a plan going forward. There's really no guidance that they need because they just know that they're going to plow through this situation. Fours, basic fear is having no identity. 
And so when you take them out of their work life and out of their regular careers and around the people who support them and you put them in their home by themselves, their identity goes away even more. And so fours, if you are working, if you are feeling a sense of loss right now, the best plan you can do is to think about your past pre-pandemic, what you were successful at then, what you loved then, and your plan going forward needs to include those things. Um, five, it's basic fear is being useless. And so those are also the people who are out right now, not really thinking about post pandemic, but they are out right now thinking about all of the different ways that they can help. Can I make masks? Can I get food for the food banks? Can I provide food to the hospitals? What can I do to be seen as useful? So that's what they're doing. And they're just living in the moment. See, some of these types are in the moment people and some of them are futuristic and are, and, and are successful at being futuristic. Not all of them are. Um, sixes, they are, their basic fear is being without support. So basically we are living their biggest fear. We oh, like, just... right. If you've got a six friend and you know it, reach out. There's not a whole lot of sixes in the world, but reach out to them and love them because their basic, their basic fear is being without support, not knowing what the future is going to be. So sixes, kind of like our fours, if you can go, hang on, if you can, hey, you're okay. You're okay. If you can, did you hit your foot? If you can go back and see where you had support in the future, in the past, and actually bring them to your future because you've probably isolated yourself a lot and and make a list of what support systems you need post pandemic that will help you with whatever plan that you have post this um sevens basic fear is being deprived or in pain so again we are living their fear um sevens are our woo girls is what i like to call them they're the ones that are like ready to party. And so right now their plan in their head is like, when can I get to my next thing? You know, like, I don't want to say like sevens are all. The like next so get margaritas. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're like, when, when can I have unlimited chips and salsa and margaritas? Um, and so sevens are probably the ones like if you've gotten somebody who sent you a zoom chat for a happy hour via zoom, that's a seven because they're trying to feed that, that need for connection. Um, and that, and trying to fill the deprived hole that they have right now being stuck inside. So they have already planned. They already know, like they have a list. I'm going to get my hair done, my nails done. I'm going to go out for margaritas. I have oh, these happy man. hours ready to go. <laughs> like I, they're ready. They already know. Um, eight's biggest fear is being controlled. And again, you know, we are in the height of being controlled right now and we're at home. And, um, and so eights to combat that create a plan for the future as well. So they probably have a very defined list of things that they are going to accomplish as soon as this is done that they can let everybody know about. My husband is an eight, so he has that list. Um, and and then That's nine plan. Huh? That wasn't even planned, but I totally do have a list of things that we do. <laughs> yep. And then nine's um basic fear is loss and separation. And so which again we are in right now. And so nines, they are I I love a good nine because they are, you know, like if you say where do you want to go out, out for dinner, they're like, whatever you want to do. They just go with the flow. And so really there's a lot of nines out there whose flow, their plan is being created by somebody else. They're waiting for what their boss is going to tell them what to do, what their spouse is going to tell them what to do, what their family is going to tell them what to do. They're perfectly fine being at home watching the Tiger King all day, whatever. That's what I'm told I'm supposed to do. That's what I'm going to do until I'm told kind of what my next thing should be. Um, they're really, and it's not that they are pushovers or anything like that. It's just, that's, that's just their, their attitude about life. It's kind of great. And they're, um, the best way that to describe a nine is Andy Dwyer from Parks and Rec. If you watch Parks and Rec. So, <laughs> okay, so, so, um, okay. So, so question then. So the, the overarching, I guess, a purpose of, of this call right here, um, I'm working under the assumption that 
people want to make themselves better. Let, let's go with that. Um, if you don't, that's cool too. Apparently you're a nine um, from what I just learned right now. That's not true. That's not how that works, but okay. <laughs> um, so like, I guess with, with all of this, with, with the overarching goal of trying to make ourselves better, because this quarantine has basically given us a, a wonderful little pause button on life. Yeah. You know, there are plenty of people whose houses have never been cleaner right now. Mm -hmm. so with, with all that being said, I guess what would be, uh, what am I trying to ask here? If, if someone wants to come out of this better than what they went in, and they want to talk to you about that, how, how do you go about determining that kind of stuff? And how do we go about setting a process or setting a path in place? Basically, like I said, it helps somebody come out of this whole thing better than what they went in. Yeah. Hang on one second, baby. Sorry. <laughs> one toddler didn't want to nap during this time, everybody. Um, so there's lots of different things that you can do. Um, I... One thing that, like I, I said before, is I create what's called your personality recipe. And you put it together and work with you on all the different things, which I'm offering for free for everybody who is on the call. So if you are interested in putting your personality recipe together, um, you just have to message me after this on my business page, which we will link on here. Um, but you put together your personality recipe. And what I am advising everyone to do right now to move forward, to come out of this better, um, because there's a lot of different, there's a lot of noise on social media right now saying you should be, you should have a better trade and you should do this and you should do that. And if you don't have any of these things, you didn't really take quarantine seriously. It's like, okay, well, that's great, but everyone's in a different situation. Some was that, people was I not are, supposed to do that? No. Uh, some people, that. right? Like some people are like, and, and it's not that, um, that that's a did, three in me. Huh? That's a three, that's yeah. Three in me. Um, because everyone's going to come out of this different. If you don't, that's the problem. But your different can be different than somebody else's. So like, you know, maybe you learned how to make the best pancakes in the world and you took, kept your kids alive through this time and you didn't pr break a computer off a style, off a space style. Like then, you, you know, you did really good. Um, <laughs> there are some people who have started businesses. There are some people who will learn a new trade, a new language and things like that. And there's so much comparison on like what you have done or are capable of doing during quarantine on Facebook and social media, like, Oh, I did this. I did this. Listen, you need to determine what your better is. Now, that being said, I want you to take a good look at what your life was like pre quarantine, what your life is like during quarantine and what you want to keep moving forward. Because there are some things that we're missing from life right now that in quarantine, like there are things that we did previously that we can't do now. And how much of that do you actually miss? And how much of that do you not actually need? What of that is not serving you? And then also look at what you do miss, because there's a lot of people who have not taken the time to grieve what they're missing. And if you don't grieve something, you just hold on to it and you will hold on to it for the next three weeks that we're stuck in this. So grieve what you're missing, make a list. My biggest advice that I, I gave someone this week was make a list of all of the things you want to do post quarantine. Like I said before, get your nails done, get your hair done, um, you know, like go out for margaritas, make a list of the things that you're looking forward to doing because that's going to give you life and give you a jolt. Um, one thing you can do too is called building a map of your life. And so you want to look at, uh, I, I do it as a bubble map. So I write life. You remember those bubble maps we made as kids? You like put something in the middle, then you put stuff off of it. I love them and I still do them. I'm 31. And so I want you to do a bubble map for your life, your career, your family, your finances, and yourself. And I want you to look at everything pre, I almost said apocalyptic, <laughs> pre quarantine during quarantine and post quarantine. There's things you're going to want to carry over. There's things that are happening during quarantine now that are fundamental to changing your family, the way that you think, the way that you love and look at those and what you want to keep moving forward 
when this is all over. Creating the bubble map kind of gives you clarity as to what you want to keep, what you don't. I really, I really like that. You know, grieve, grieve the stuff you're missing. That's it's an interesting way to go about it because I can definitely, you know, see people that would look at their little piece of paper that says margaritas on it. They look at that word and smile. <laughs> like, yeah. I'll have margaritas again one day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and there's so many of us, like I said, I work with small business owners and, and I lost three fourths of my clients when this ended because their industries are considered non-essential, non -essential, so they aren't working. And I had to work with them on grieving that, like grieving the fact that right now we're not working. And that's hard. If you're somebody who likes to work, that's hard. I am someone who likes to work. I love my children, but I was not made to be a stay at home mom. Not, it's not my strong suit. So I, I've had to grieve over and over again, leaving the house and seeing my people and going to events and putting on events so that I can be okay with the fact that I wake up and I make pancakes in the morning, you know? Uh-huh. No <laughs> okay. So we're getting, we're getting near the end of it here. So a couple of things. One, how do people contact you? Where do they follow you? Where do they find you? Yeah, so I am at Tamika Taylor Coaching on all platforms, on Facebook, Instagram. Um, you can also, that's my business page. You can find me as a personal, um, as at Miss Tamika Taylor for Instagram and Facebook. And you can find me there. My website is being redone right now because might as well when a quarantine is done or is happening. I'm redoing my website and everything like that. But that is TamikaTaylor.co. But um, you can find me on social media is the easiest way to get a hold of me. You can find my phone number um, and you can also personal message me. So like I said before, I am offering the free personality recipe to everybody on this call. So you just have to reach out to me via social media and we'll get that started for you. Okay. And one more thing. I mean, obviously I, I gave you a list of uh, stuff I want to chat about. We're kind of put you on the spot here. If we go number one through nine, give each one of those a quick piece of advice. Keep going, or keep doing your thing, or don't worry, you ain't good yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so if you're an Enneagram one, keep posting your keep posting your stuff because it's gonna make you feel good when people respond to it. Basically, um, if you're an Enneagram two, keep reaching out to your people. Um, and asking them for what help that they need. Even though you need a lot of help, keep reaching out to others and keep having Zoom calls and things like that. Threes, just keep working on your plan. Just keep plowing through. Um, and make sure though, as a three, you don't plow over others in your life who aren't moving as fast as you are. Um, fours, if you are having an identity crisis right now, um, pick up a good book that'll help uh, and then reach out to your people um, all fours have a circle of very strong people in their lives and that helps so reach out to your people fives um, just keep finding ways to it sounds terrible but keep finding ways to feel important so keep reorganizing your house and keep cleaning and and keep helping because the world we're in right now needs a lot of help. The people around us need a lot of help. So keep finding those ways. Um, six, you are not without support. You are not alone in this. And I know it feels like you're alone a lot of the times, but you're not. Um, if you feel alone, tell somebody. Tell somebody about it. Sevens, um, keep, keep doing our Zoom happy hours. We love them. I, I mean, she, I just got a text message yesterday about a Zoom happy hour for today with my friends that went, I went to Italy with eight years ago. And I'm like, Oh, I can't wait. Like I'm pumped. Sevens keep, keep doing that for us. Some people like roll their eyes, but then they get on it and they love it. Just keep doing it. Um, eight, <coughs> keep working on your plan. Um, keep plowing through, even though some days it doesn't feel like you can. And then nines, you, you're not alone. You're not and someday somebody, and if you have like nine, if you're a nine and you need someone to tell you what to do, shoot, I'll tell you what to do. <laughs> me. And I'm not even a nine. <laughs> That's funny. I try. 
Cool. Well, again, I really appreciate you taking the time. Even though I know you got little babies at home to take care of. Um, everyone watching, I really hope you got something out of this. Um, and I guess just for everyone watching, if you want to go back through this, I'm a three and an eight. So you can see uh, her facial expressions change when she talks about three and eight. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, Tamika, appreciate it. Frankie, yep. Daddy loves you. <laughs> Everybody else, we'll see you later. You have a great rest of your Friday. Have a great Easter weekend. Thanks to be God. Bye. Bye.